beloved Ascension Pioneers, all you divine lovers out there. So as I've mentioned to you um, just recently, my videos are going to slightly change a bit from time to time. So today I wanted to try something new with a little short walking video. I hope I don't trip anywhere here. <laughs> I'm walking in the nature surroundings when there's lots of trees and roots and you know the ground is not always even. So excuse me if I look down on the ground from time to time and not look at all of you. So. I'm recording this video on the sacred Holy Mother, Mother Mary's Assumption Day, which is always such a beautiful energetic day because the Divine Mother energy and essence is really felt strongly when we really connect. The thing is that with our physical Ascension, we're always working towards getting more of that into our physical embodiment. That's the whole thing. It's not just to feel that at times, but it's to become the essence of that, if you know what I mean. So I've shared with you so many writings each year about that essence and each year I remember since my awakening, I've shared many writings about and from the Holy Universal Mother of that spirit, which I often call also the birth of it is the Holy Spirit, the essence of all life in creation. So as I've recently been reflecting in all of that, a lot that came through had to do with really tuning into our daily lives, you know, how do our daily lives match up what we have gathered so far? Because as you know, I've shared before that, <laughs> okay, switching sides that ooh, <laughs> so that our ascension is getting very deeply rooted into practical matter so it's about more and more living our ascension in our daily life and also our routines and our relationships because the thing is as we've been mastering our inner ascension journey um, which also wasn't always an easy path now an even more challenging aspect will come because I always share with you, there's always gonna be new challenges. You won't just suddenly rise up to the occasion at something and you think, okay, I've arrived, that's it. Because remember, the moment that you think I've arrived and now it's done, you stop growing and you stop expanding as a cos cosmic being, cosmic master and eternal training. And I've arrived, my destination point almost. So let's take a little walk on our <laughs> sacred mountain beach and have a little ascension down talk, okay? Um, so I want to share a few things with you, but I think it's kind of hard to talk and walk at the same time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit here in a beautiful spot. I'm going to talk about something that I received as us as very important for our ascension. Let's go. talk about something that is really important from the standpoint of when you own your ascended mastery or when you start your initiation into that there will be um, something that will start kind of like coming into your awareness as what's happening okay and it's it's regarding your energy mastery and the kind of things that you need to understand to know where your energy is going. So you know when we a lot of the times we think about things and we think about the nature of certain realities we wish to create and we put a lot of energy or a lot of effort there but then that thing doesn't kind of end up happening physically. So a huge part of the Ascension Mastery is it's almost like you know when angels can be at certain places simultaneously. Well we're, we're learning how to do that in the physical body because when you're in a physical body you're not always aware of that you're not always aware of your energy projections and emanation and where they're going um, at 
because the thing is that in each dimensional awareness our energy projection is very focused upon where it is like when you're in your physical body that's where most of your energy is so when you have an idea let's say I had this idea now for <laughs> Holy Mother's Day of Mary that we want to go to this um, peak here there's this summit that people call and they go to these um, pilgrimages to kind of like be with Mary and Mary's energy or whatever but you know the masters are not at certain hills or locations and it's it's where people put a lot of focus and energy there so one of the ideas was well, let's go there on Monday but we had a weekend when we had our own personal initiations that we were kind of facing and I'm gonna talk about it a little later um, but there was this energy intent and a lot of energy went there so in the end we didn't end up going there we knew that was for a reason because a lot of people go there there's this pilgrimage and you know a lot of collective energy and mass and then I started wondering well but why does then so much focus then go there and why is there still so much of energy going there and a lot of times we as humans we wouldn't understand that and we would think of that as why would that I place so much of my energy there and didn't end up happening I'm a bad manifesto or you know I'm not aware of what I need no the fact about living your mastery is that your force always tells you things that you need to receive and the energy emanations you're supposed to put out there but on the human level on your conscious level you won't always always understand that and there's lots of wind coming through today but because of that lack of understanding you, we sometimes perceive things as mistakes but from a standpoint of mastery we start perceiving things as simply energy <laughs> radiations and emanations right so as we didn't end up going there but I felt a part of you still goes it's because a part of you does go there but you and your physical body where most of your soul energy is coming through and translating itself you stay put to where you need to be for your greatest highest good for your physical temple and the consciousness you are radiating through um, so why does it feel like a lot of times there are parts of you going elsewhere is because the more mastery you have the more you can do those energy projections but you're not always aware of it it's not the same thing as soul fragmentation please don't confuse the two because when your soul is fragmented it's not the same because you won't feel whole in your body where you are now and there's parts of you and pieces of you going elsewhere but you won't feel whole and centered in this body this thing what I'm talking about is the full mastery of your energy so the emanations that you're putting out are from that wholeness are from your mastery it's like when they say well masters or you know angels they can be in many places at the same time it's because they've mastered that it's not coming from a place of being fragmented it's coming from a place of higher consciousness so for me what they show me and when I say they it's always the group over soul and overlighted by my I am presence they show me that a lot of the times because I bring a lot of healing to this planet and my energy is very highly evolved I have these ideas that I don't always put out there physically but energetically I do and I go places and I go to people and sometimes you think of a certain someone and you think of them because they need your energy or energy needs to go there but it's not that addictive codependent human energy it's like you, you think of someone all oh, because you're logging for them it's, it's that healed old energy is coming from your master self so there's a very fine line between the two there's a very distinct difference and it is a major difference because that projection is coming from a place of wholeness and there's beautiful two butterflies again flying there up in the air <laughs> making love with each other it's beautiful so when you have that your soul will show you that that's what actually is happening to you and if you've read books from Dolores Cannon a lot of times being say that that you know when we don't put energy into a certain something um, like physically but we do still energetically and a lot of focus is placed somewhere but it doesn't end up happening as the overall reality in the physical body it's still happening on another level so there's parts of us that need to be certain places like there's a part of me today because I'm still thinking about that pilgrimage right because we have thoughts reverberating back to us um, because there's part of us of our overall huge multidimensional self there so multidimensionality does not only apply to parts of us being in other dimensions and other timelines no it also refers to our physical body mastery multidimensionality when you know that conscious emanations of your energy can go elsewhere and there will be feelings accompanying that and it will feel like fullness it will feel from a space of wholeness and you will know that physically you, you made the right choice to be maybe somewhere else or doing something else but still you will feel that there's no mistake in you putting so much energy in another thought or in another direction 
because a part of you is still going there and that's cosmic service and that's not something everyone can embody yet at this time but I'm sharing this with you because a lot of you are moving towards the understanding of what's happening when this is so so when you're being called to something but then later you feel well but I'm not being called to there anymore physically why is this happening am I a split personality or am I having um, quick wit in terms of how I make rapid decisions one time yes one time no no is a part of it is because you are choosing your timeline and you're learning the art of choice the refined choice in each moment you're learning to be centered in the moment but for those of you who are already able and capable because some of you are ancients and you know how to do that already without thinking about it just your human body is remembering and you're filtering that remembers is like, aha that's what's happening so a lot of you are capable of doing that and that's where the understanding of that is returning so you're no longer thinking of those other timelines um, physical timelines in terms of mistakes or bad choices or bad calls you know sometimes you're like oh that was a bad call and not really um, <clears throat> it's not the same thing so your your soul will guide you into sending out thoughts and energy waves of where the energy needs to travel like a part of me needs to be there today that doesn't mean I'm not whole and fully centered in this body because this is done again from a place of mastery not from a soul fragmentation even soul fragmentation from a highest standpoint is is we're not really fragmented we're always unified but the infinite self the creation self that experiences and goes out and creates these vast timelines and expansion journeys and experiences does feel like that and it often can create this um, and we might say well this is a distortion not really it's just a part of the learning experience the learning curve but there's also a part of us that is the eternal self that never changes that never has these stories and experiences that just has the knowledge of the infinite eternal self not just that vast self that goes out and explores but that self which is always rooted it's your creation self which I often talk about is before you plunge into all the different storylines and experiences so let me share a little bit about our experience this weekend we had this initiation and Saturn went um, direct exactly at the same time which was you know this is the initiation planet sometimes of limitations and restrictions and now we're breaking through them because the planet goes direct again we had these initiations of again how we see each other through another because as you know being an enlightened human and luminous being cannot be about changing others and a lot of times people that are placed upon our path will be very different to us because we're learning that unconditional love and acceptance of the self also through another so when you had your journeys of self-initiation self-awakening self-mastery learning how to be with yourself just you alone and was much easier then the challenging more challenging part which is the part of you that never ceases to grow you know when you think well I've done everything I've mastered pretty much everything I can then it's the ego speaking because you never cease to grow you never cease to expand your cosmic mastery is always outgrowing itself and then you will know that in combining that with another and merging the forces you will have greater initiations taking place because you will then bring the world the gift of that companionship through the enlightened core um, which is being the magnetic self and then the electric self but then seeing that as a mirror within yourself and through another which is not always an easy task to do let's face it a lot of humans are still coming from the filtered perspective of wanting our relationships to be something to fill a certain something for us to have a role a lot of them are even codependent for example so when people a lot of times are going to move a little bit like here <laughs> When a lot of times people um, tend to not just want to change each other but change the natural course of the relationship or they want to make it better you know let's face it a lot of people want to be better they want to be better people you know you want to be a better person you say I'm doing self-work towards becoming the betterment of me the refined soul perfection has nothing to do with you expecting perfection from yourself but realizing the soul the purity in its essence the gem self that is already perfect and then believing in that through faith so intensely that in the end it has no other choice but becoming a reality so I always say I'm not perfect um, I'm not a perfectionist in a way anymore I used to be before my awakening but um, I now understand and realize that I understand that I believe in the perfection of the divine so I don't need to try so hard to be perfect but I allow the perfection to permeate through me because I believe humans have the program within to become perfected beings and when people say well that's not true humans cannot be perfect look at how they are well yes a lot of them are not embodying that yet but there are humans who are at that learning curve of their soul evolution who can and who are doing it 
So I choose to hold that uh, pillar of light for that to be a reality, right? So when I say certain things, they're always coming from that space. Um, and it's very important for our relationships that we don't try so hard at them. We don't try so hard with each other. We don't push each other so far and so hard because a lot of times when we're coming from the perspective that we're not the best or we're making a mistake, or especially with another in a relationship because there's a lack of similarity. So you think you're supposed to be more similar and more alike, then there will be this program, oh, I need to change. And therefore the change will not be natural through your life force. It will be forced upon with your ego. When the ego, when the soul is evolved in its maturation point to a certain degree, the ego will start recognizing itself. It will start to catch, catch itself in the act. So you literally see yourself for these pitfalls you're making. You're like, oh my God, I'm catching myself doing this. And when this really starts to occur, a beautiful soul alchemy is in the making because the ego finally sees what it has been doing for so long and it starts to blend into and merge into the greatness of the soul. So it's not that ego is dying or, you know, a lot of new agers say, well, ego dies or teachers teach that. It's not true. It just becomes engulfed and overlit by a much greater, a greater <laughs> majority of your great self, of your grandiose self. So it starts to be overlit, it starts to be, um, I don't know how to say that, but it's unified. It becomes, it blends into it. It's like engulfed in this presence of the greater self. So the ego itself um, re-emerges, resurrects. So this is the resurrection of the ego because it humbles itself. So you have, let's say you have a raging experience like, oh my God, oh my God, oh, this person, why are they doing this? Oh my gosh. And you're learning through that, right? You're like embracing each other. and. That's why we're not supposed to run away from relationships because we're seeing each other so clearly through that mirror. And when we can face those parts of us that are still resisting the life force and what is and what another is blossoming into and what you're meant to blossom into, not by forcing it to happen, trying hard, making it happen because our divine purpose is not something we make happen. It's something who we already are at our core and we just need to allow to for that to be unveiled through us and to be blossomed through us. So. When this happens, when this humility of ego is caught in the act, <laughs> ego catches itself in the act, and you start to be humbled by your own self, the ego gets like this, you know, you feel like after a raging, roaring session, like, ah, oh, being so mad, or I don't know, res that's resistance, right? Everything is resistance to what it is. And when you're over with that resistance and you kind of calm yourself, either way, either method, whatever works for you, you know, I had this weekend, this beautiful, walk um, into a mountain and that humbles me every time and then I kind of tame that aspect of me which sometimes still feels like it has to be a roaring lion, right? Not always. It's a different kind of roar when you roar from the power of love or when you're resisting from ego. So when you catch yourself and then you humble yourself through that same core, ego in itself will come into divine grace. That divine grace will not be given as a gift from the outside or other masters and beings of light, but you yourself will become overlit, <laughs> over <laughs> overlighted, I would say. I mean, physical ascension is exactly that. When you yourself do that work, when other beings are just your guides, teachers, mentors, way showers, like I'm just a way shower for a lot of you and that's it. I have to walk my own journey. I'm not, I can't do that for anyone because the whole act of this divine grace can only unfold this inner soul alchemy from within. So that was my whole point today. I wanted to make this very clear and this is what um, we were guided to do in the sacredness when we went for this weekend journey we went to travel without even saying anything we're just we said we're just gonna go we didn't even notify everyone because you know we're not obliged to we just felt the calling of spirit and it was a deep calling for initiation and you know sometimes when the ego resists it will say oh my god I'm tired of these lessons why is this happening why am I repeating this why it's for a reason. It's exactly because these aspects are re-emerging to be known, to make themselves known to you so that you have the ability to work through. Don't run away and don't hide. A lot of people that I've met are hiding or they're just not ready yet to face that level of commitment to the self, to the purity of the soul. But when you do, I'm telling you, it's such an honoring experience. It's so blissfully unfolding. The magic is just there. You will reawaken to the true love that you are without resisting because anything that is futile, right? <laughs> Resistance is futile. It keeps us there. It's like a dog chasing its own tail. You say, okay, I want to make this better, better. I want to be better. But it's it's always, you'll always want to be better. That's the whole thing of 
the difference between perfection and being a perfectionist. The perfectionist always wants to be better and better and work harder and achieve more and you know it's never enough, never enough, always more. But the one who believes in the perfection of soul will simply allow and the life force will start to flow. I know it's something that we can talk about, but when it's felt, when you will feel the difference yourself, you will be able to apply it. So it will become an applicable wisdom for you. It will become an integrated journey of the soul. So, so much of this wisdom shared for you today from our mountain space. Uh, the second part will be the activation. So I hope you will enjoy and rejoice in that. It's the most blessed gift we've received yesterday as we've actually had the intention of going to prepare for this Ma Mary's energy and that overlighted presence when the Assumption Day comes and there's two beautiful white butterflies. I don't know if you can see them, but they're playing in the background again, white light of unity. And I hope you will enjoy it because it was a beautiful gift that we've received, that I received through Holy Spirit and shared it in my partnership and then passing it on and then pass it on to others and really love each other through the grace of that which is the life force, that eternal spark within you, not just the you that is detached, that thinks it needs to always do something to correct. Because the aspect of us that's always correcting mistakes, it's, it's almost like a dog chasing its own tail. It's, it's never ending. You never stop doing that. You always try harder and better. And, and we forget what's, what's the truth. <laughs> the more we do that, the more we're in the state of forgetfulness. So physical ascension is resurrecting that part of us, which is the eternal self, merging with our infinite self, and the rest will come through that activation. So blessings to all of you from the Holy Spirit, from us here, from the heart of the Alps. And as always, so much love, wisdom, and power, and enjoy the activation. Beautiful two butterflies here. I hope you can see them. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, see? I'm talking about the essence of two. And then the third one comes along because then you spread it out and then you make it a third energy. Um, please go to my webpage, Serapina Light, where you can find two powerful light activations. The first one is called the Gateway to Physical Ascension, and I co-created that with Master Serapis Bay, the overlighting presence of the white ray, which is my ray of unity consciousness. This one is about what it truly means, um, the process of physical ascension, what it is, and the complete devotion and commitment to truth. And that's how Serapis energy is. It's very raw, but it's very committed to that truth. Um, the second one I received now with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Mother Light Gateway and the Mary Mother's Ascension Assumption Day. And this one is more about being an initiate of divine love. Well, the first one is being addressed as initiates of spirit. But these two are counterparts. These two go together. So if you can get both activations, all my light activations are the same energy exchange. Uh, there's no difference between that. They're very powerful because they're channeled direct through that aspect. It's not just mental, it's very powerful because it unlocks the codes of our own aspects that we're aligning with that and these are two very powerful counterparts divine mother divine father so physical ascension and what it takes in our creation self to get there so spirit and soul as one so go to my page it's at the home page but also you can go to separate sections it's all described where you can find it and the links of course are as well down below so I highly encourage you to get that, get light activated like that, light buzzing that's going to start now. So I'll see you soon.